Hey, I'm Charlie Craven with Fly Fisherman Magazine, and for the February-March edition, I'm going to tie Antonio Rodriguez's Adult Mayfly. This is a really cool little mayfly pattern that uses CDC in a couple different ways. Come with me and we'll tie one up. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm Charlie Craven, and today I'm going to tie for you Antonio Rodriguez's Adult Mayfly. Um, and while this has got the most boring name in the world, it's literally Antonio's Adult Mayfly. Um, and I suspect that is to delineate it from Antonio's Mayfly Emerger. Um, but while it's a, uh, a non-creative name, it's a pretty creative fly. Antonio is a comp guy. And uh, uh, a lot of the, the uh, you know, typical comp flies that you see are, you know, Pertagons and things like that. Um, this is a dry fly that uh, sort of came to light in, in competition style fishing. And uh, like, like many of the comp patterns, it's a very simple, quick, easy, cheap fly to tie. Um, and, uh, and honestly, as I've sat down to tie a few of them, um, it's pretty creative. It, uh, it is, for all intents and purposes, a CDC no-hackle. Um, you can see it's got two split wings split with a clump of fluorofiber. Um, and a pretty imitative uh, little pattern that's that's really a, a quick, easy fly to bang out. Um, so I'm sort of excited about this one. Um, I've tied mine here on a Tiemco 100 SPBL because I tie everything on that, and I like that hook. Um, Antonio ties his on a 900 BL, but, um, you know, it's become well known that all I do is catch big, giant fish all the time. Uh, so I need that little bit stouter hook. Um, and honestly, in my experience, the uh, 100 SP being just slightly stouter wire um, really does not affect the flotation of the fly, but it certainly uh, holds up better to the strong tippets that we have these days. So uh, without further ado, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into this. Um, so I'm going to pull this one out of the vise, and I'm tying a size 16. And, and obviously, this is a, uh, you know, a pattern fly. Um, this is a fly that you can, you can use in different colors and sizes to match different bugs. Um, I'm going to tell you SI-16 with just natural colored CDC. Um, one of the cool things about this fly, I think it's got four materials, um, and there's not much to it, but you can uh, can vary that up a bit if uh, if you feel like you need to, to do that for different different bugs. Um, I could see this fly working really well in a green drake size, you know, big size, um, particularly lending it what, itself well for larger size flies. Um, you know, so many of the bigger flies are pretty big and bushy and, and uh, not low floating and sort of stealthy. Uh, this fly could be made in big sizes and uh, uh, still be down in a, um, you know, kind of a stealthy profile. Um, so I'm going to tie this one um, with some 18 knot Semperfly Nano Silk. Um, and I'm just using gray here. Um, the, the thread barely shows at all, but it does match the, the color of the, of the fly overall. Um, and the reason I'm using the 18 knot is there's a, a little bit of thread work that we're going to do up here at the at the hook eye. Um, it's not so much that we need the strength, but I do like this very small thread uh, for this kind of fly. Um, then I just don't have to to worry so much about um, building up extra thread bulk uh, because this thread's so flat and small. So I'm going to start that thread just a couple eye lengths back from the hook eye, and I'm going to come all the way back to the bend. And at the bend, uh, true to most of these competition flies, I'm going to use uh, Coq de Leon. Uh, this is a rooster saddle feather, uh, Coq de Leon rooster, for the tail. So I'm going to take a clump of, oh, on a size 16, I'm going to say maybe 10 or 12 fibers. And I want to pull those out so that their their tips become even. And I'll pull those off the, off the feather. And I'll tie these in at the bend. And I'm shooting for about a shank length long. Um, and gosh, I got it, got it on the first time. It's like I've done this before today. Um, so about a shank length long on that tail, and I'll wrap forward over those butt ends, um, right back up, about up to where I started the thread, and I'll trim those butt ends out. Now for the for the ribbing, um, you can use flat tinsel, flat copper or gold tinsel, um, uh, which is what Antonio used on his, but he did mention that you can uh, um, use extra small copper wire as well, and uh, I just happen to have some sitting on my desk, and uh, um, I actually like the way the copper wire sort of blends into the dub, into the, the dubbing that we're going to use here. So I'm going to use this copper, um, and I'll tie this in, again, right where I started the thread. I'm going to wrap back over it, all the way back to the base of the tail. And I'll just clip that in my material spring back there out of the way. Um, now, here here comes the crafty part. Um, and you can see how this fly was, was developed just in the, in the method in which it's tied. Um, I'm guessing that Antonio had some CDC sitting on his desk and just grabbed that and used it as dubbing. And that's exactly what he does here. Um, now, what Antonio does is he'll grab a CDC feather 
and just peel some fibers off the side. And you can see that leaves these little hooks on the end. And he will just dub that right on the thread. And, and honestly, it's, you know, it's a little, little scrappy, but uh, you can kind of trim them out after the fact. Um, me being a perfectionist, just I just can't get behind that. So what I'm going to do, um, and I'll show you here with the other half of this same feather, what I did is I took the CDC feather and I just cut those fibers off as close down to the to the stem as I could so I don't have those little little hooks on the end. Um, and I've taken a couple feathers. This is a good use of, of the kind of butt ends of the feathers that you haven't, uh, um, that you use the tips on, that you haven't used the rest of. Uh, but I'm going to take a little clump of this dubbing, or of this, these feather fibers, as it is, and I'm going to dub these onto the thread, just like you would dubbing. Um, and some of the fibers can be pretty long, some can be pretty short. Um, I did cut some of them shorter on purpose, but I left some of the longer ones mixed in. Um, if you kind of understand how dubbing works, those longer longer fibers tend to stick out a little bit more on the fly. So um, this is going to clean up the body to some degree, but still give us that, that air of bugginess. And I'll tell you, the CDC dubbing doesn't go on super tightly. Um, let me burn up some thread here so I can get this onto the screen. But you can see that that dubbing's on there fairly loose. Um, so I'm going to start this just at the bend of the hook. And I'm going to come forward. Oh, I'm going to say, yeah, 60, 65% of the way, 70% of the way up the hook. And you can see that makes a pretty shaggy, ragged, nasty even body, um, which is pretty pretty good you know um, I'm getting more into these uh, um, I, I hate to say ugly but but ratty flies I, I sort of um, uh, have come to, to come to appreciate this kind of thing you know I'm usually a very clean neat trim tire and uh, uh, I appreciate these little bit buggier flies these days so uh, I'm gonna leave that just as it is and then I'm gonna pick up my wire and I'm gonna rib through fairly tight wraps um, nice evenly spaced turns but fairly close together and then I'll tie that wire off at the front there. And with that extra fine wire, you can just pull on it to break it off. Um, you can see I've got some of these fibers kind of sticking forward. I'll just sweep those back and catch them with a turn or two of thread. Now, um, Antonio goes in and comes in and, and trims these fibers down a bit. Um, you can build a bit of a taper into that body, kind of a cone shape. And that's probably not a bad idea. Um, although, again, like I say, I like that uh, that sort of raggedness to it. Um, you can see we've got just a, a nicely segmented body, but made from CDC fibers. Um, you know, just to, to go off track here for a minute, which I'm prone to do, um, CDC does not, does not float because of any special oils in it. Um, it floats because of the structure of the feather. Um, it's got a lot of surface area in a very small amount of, of space. Um, so when you mat these down, when you, when you, uh, if you dub this down very tightly and matted those fibers down, you really wouldn't get any float out of it. Um, but what we're getting here by putting that on loosely is we're maintaining that surface area. Um, that wire rib is just to kind of toughen that up and add some segmentation to the fly. And you can see it's very subtle, it hardly even shows. Um, so now I'm going to overlap back over the front edge of this abdomen to about, um, I'll, I'll say 60%. I, I say, say I dubbed to 70% and I'll wrap back to 60 um, and at this point, I want to take about 18 or 20 orange floral fiber strands. And, and I've actually counted these, and, and only for, for your use. Um, they don't have, it doesn't have to be the exact number, but you want a fairly good clump of these fire orange floral fiber strands. Um, and we're going to use this to split the wing eventually, um, but we want to have a big enough clump that it will actually affect the wing. So I'm going to tie these in just here at the front of that abdomen. And I'll draw them down to length and I'll wrap tightly down over their bases right up on top of the hook and I'll just let that hang back out of the way. Now we're going to dub a little thorax um, and if you've got some longer fiber stuff in here in your same little pinch of CDC dubbing um, this is a good place to use that. We want this to be just a little buggier. And again I'm not twisting this on uh, super tightly. I want it to be sort of ragged but I'll use this CDC dubbing and I'll start at the front here, just about an eye length behind the hook eye, and I'll build the thorax. And I just want to fatten that up a bit and hopefully end with bare thread just up there at the back of that index point. You can see I'll clean that up a bit about one eye length back. You can see a shaggy little ratty thorax there. 
and I use ratty as a uh, term of endearment. I actually like that. That's that's what we're looking for. Um, now for the wing, what we're going to do is we're going to take two nice dense CDC feathers. So I can see I've got two of them here. And I'm going to stack one right on top of the other and just even their tips up. And then what I'll do is I'll create a separation point in here. Like so. And I'll cut those tips out. So what that'll leave me with is a, a V-notch in the tip of the feathers. I'm going to take that bunch and bundle it up into a nice tight little bundle that has no stem in it. Um, now, these are about the right length for the hook, and I don't, I'm not really um, worried too much about them being any one exact length, and you can see they're ragged, so it's not going to make a huge difference, but we want uh, you know that sort of disheveled look, um, but about a shank length long for the overall length, and I'll set these in just up here behind the hook eye, and then I'll tie them down with a pin trap. Um, and this is where this small thread, I can tie this down very tightly with several turns of thread and not create a lot of bulk there. So I've tied that just up on top of the hook, just like a, almost like an elk hair caddis wing. And I'll come in and trim these butt ends out just as close as I get, I can get. And I'll save those feathers off to the side. Now, those two feathers are still good for another fly. You can do the same thing, uh, much like my mole fly pattern. You can restack them and come in and cut that center stem out and get another neat little bundle to use for the next fly. Um, or you could cut that off and use that for dubbing. So now I'm going to smooth this head off just a bit here. And I'm going to take my thread, or my, I'm sorry, my floral fiber up between, or up through the middle of that wing to, div to divide it. Um, and I find if you kind of rock it back and forth a bit, you'll get the wings divided into two equal clumps. Um, you know, obviously you got to start off a little closer than... Uh, um, closer than kind of, but let's get there. All right, yeah, we're about there. Uh, and I'm going to pull those forward tightly and tie them down just behind the eye. Three or four good tight turns there. And now what I'll do is I'm going to double that floral fiber back. And what this is going to do is make a little indicator on top. Um, so pretty ingenious use of this bright colored material. It doesn't really show on the bottom of the fly, uh, but you're going to have that bright... Uh, and this stuff is super bright, really shows up well, especially when you're, you're casting the fly further away from you um, or out in pocket water or choppy water. Uh, makes the fly a little bit easier to see. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these long ends back and just create a little head here to sort of anchor that down. And I don't really worry too much about cleaning that up. And I'll come in and whip finish right on top there. If I can get my whip finisher lined up. There we go. Three or four turns. And then I can trim my thread out, kind of preen those wings back into position. I want them sort of upright, and I'll give you a front view of this fly here when we're, when we're done. And I'm going to trim that, that floral fiber about half the length of the wing. You want a little stub there so that you can see the fly on the water. You can see how bright that is. Now for the final length of the wing, um, if it's a little long, and I wouldn't really say that this one is too long, but um, if you need to shorten it a bit, come in from the ends. Don't just cut square, um, and you could even sort of sort of preen and taper these into you know a little bit more of a, a mayfly wing shape. Um, we're going to put a little shot of head cement on here. With that stacked material head, it's never a bad idea to add just a touch. And of course, I've got. A little dubbing mixed in there. Just a little shot around that thread head. Just to lock things down. And now if I hold this very carefully, you can see the front view. We've got two very distinct wings, um, especially if I sort of help them, help them along. But widespread wings um, give you a really nice profile. And it takes, um, you know, a little... Um, Historical knowledge of uh, flies like the uh, Lawson Snow Hackle, um, you know, some of the old uh, old patterns, you know, Compare Done is, is very similar. Um, but what this fly really struck me as is a CDC No Hackle. Um, it's just got those widespread wings with that sort of ratty body um, that's going to set this fly down low on the surface, but it's still going to be easy to see, which is a pretty ingenious way to go about it. Um, 
that CDC, one thing that I've also learned over the years is when you use CDC as a body, um, very often that portion, the dubbed portion, will get saturated um, and sit down low in the water, which I think is a plus in every instance. You know, flies that sit lower on the water seem to, uh, uh, for me anyway, work better than, than flies that sit up real high, um, uh, particularly in a hatch situation. Um, but that is Antonio's adult mayfly. Cool, cool little bug. Um, you know, one of the coolest things about this gig, doing these, uh, um, the Fly Tires Bench Met article for Fly Fisherman Magazine, um, is that I get to tie so much stuff that I, I normally wouldn't. And I get to talk to some really cool people, and Antonio's well among them. Um, he uh, just bought Front Range Anglers up in Boulder, and uh, I want to congratulate him on that. I know that... Uh, um, is a pretty cool thing owning a fly shop myself. I know that's a that's a big day in a man's life. So, um, congratulations to Antonio, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this fly. This is, uh, um, you know, like I say, one that you can you can tie in a variety of different colors and kind of bang out pretty quickly. Um, but on the water, that is a a fly that sits down low, um, is visible and easy to see, and is pretty darn imitative. So, um, there it is. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven. Mm -hmm.